Hi, this is Jason from Smartermarks, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build an assessment. Before we can build an assessment, we need to put together some questions. If I click on the question bank tab at the top of the page, you can see I've already got a few questions built. We'll build a couple more here. I'll click on new question to get going. We'll start by choosing a title for the question. This is the name it'll be saved under in our question bank. I'm going to start with a motion graphs question. Before we go any further, we need to look at the anatomy of a Smarter Marks question. Every question is broken up like this. At the top, we have an optional context where we can put supporting information for the rest of the question, which is either common to several questions or just awkward to put in the questions themselves. Below that, we have one or more question parts. Back at our question, I'm planning to include two parts, and I'd like to allow them to be shuffled between versions. So I'll select Shuffle Parts for Multi-Part Items, then I'll click Save to continue. I'll build the context for the question first by clicking Edit in the Context pane. I'm typing the context out here, but if you've got an existing question that you'd like to move over to Smartermarks, you can copy and paste the parts of the question into each element here. The editor gives us a lot of tools for building questions. For example, in this question, I'm going to include a diagram in the context. I'll click on the Image button, choose an image, then give it a size as a percentage of the width of the question. After I click Upload, the image is uploaded and placed in our question. If I want to change the size of the image, I can just hover over it and use the handle at the bottom right to resize. In addition to adding images, the editor lets you format and align text, add randomized and calculated variables, and insert blanks, tables, equations, and symbols. You'll find more details on all of this in the Help section of the website. I'm done creating the context, so I'll click Save to continue. Now we're ready to add our first question. I'll click Edit on the question panel. Our first question is going to be a simple, multiple-choice question, so I'll leave these options alone and type the question, then click Save when I'm done. Now we'll add answers by clicking Add New Answer. This first answer is the correct one, so I'll give it a value of 1 while I'm here, then click Save. We'll be adding distractors the same way, so I'll speed up the video for that. Now, we'll add a second part to this question by clicking Add Part at the bottom of the Parts list. We have a lot of options for question types, including regular multiple choice, III questions, true-false, numeric response questions with answers in decimal or scientific format, selection questions, and written response questions. I'm going to build a response table question next, with two labeled blanks, I and II. Response table questions allow you to test related concepts in one multiple choice question. Here, I'm going to ask about the acceleration of the toy car, but also about whether it's speeding up or slowing down. I'll click Save, and we'll give this some answers. Answers for response table questions come in parts, and I'll enter those separately here. In this question, I want to test whether students know that the car is slowing down, and also whether they can calculate acceleration from the slope of the graph. So my answers will be four combinations of some reasonable answers to those questions. Again, we'll speed up the video a bit for the distractors. That's it for this question, so I'm going to give it a quick preview before we move ahead by clicking the Preview button at the top of the screen. At the top of the preview, we have the question very nearly as it'll be shown in our assessment, and below that, all of our scored responses. This all looks good. I'm going to build one more question before we move on to building an assessment, so I'll click New Question at the top of the page. We'll make this one a simple numeric response question. There are lots of options here that'll be familiar to those who have been using numeric response questions on our response forms, but the most important options are on the left. Here, we're building a decimal format numeric response question with four boxes for student answers, including the decimal, and including an automatically generated response prompt that we'll see in a moment. I've got the text entered here, so I'll click Save and enter the correct response as well. Give this a quick preview before we move on. There's the response prompt at the bottom of the question. 
Everything looks good, so let's build an assessment. To build an assessment, click on the Assessment Templates tab, then on the New Assessment button at the top right. We'll give the assessment a name that it'll be saved under, and a title. We'll have a chance to modify the title as needed for each version later on, so I'll just leave this like it is for now and click Save. I'm going to build two sections for this assessment, a multiple choice and a numeric response section. We'll start with the multiple choice section by clicking Add Section and choosing Multiple Choice Section. I'll leave everything at the default here and click Save to create the section. There are two ways to add questions to a section. Because we've already built questions and saved them in our question bank, we can now add those to our assessment straight from the bank by clicking Add Items and selecting Choose from Bank. Alternatively, we can create questions directly from the Assessment Builder, opening the questions in a new tab by clicking Create New Item. Here, we'll choose our questions from the question bank we've built by clicking Choose from Bank. On the left here, we can navigate any folders we've built to find questions. On the right, are any questions in the selected folder that match our section type and haven't been used yet. As I hover over the questions, a preview shows below. We're going to choose all of these questions, then click Add to add them to our assessment. Already, we've got a preview going for our assessment on the right. I'm going to add a second section for our numeric response questions, then add our numeric response items to it. For larger assessments, we can add shuffle breaks using the Add Shuffle Break button to control the shuffling of questions within a section. For this assessment, I'm going to leave the sections as they are. One last thing to do before we build a version, set learning outcomes. To add learning outcomes to an assessment, choose Learning Outcomes in the View pane. Then, choose a section and a question using the controls on the left. Below the question preview, we have a list of categories that have already been defined for this assessment. I'm going to click the Add New Category button to add a new one. I'll call the category Motion Graphs and select both parts of the question, since they're both motion graph questions. When we choose another question now, we have the option of adding a pre-existing category to the question. For example, this question is also a motion graphs question. Going back to the Sections and Questions view, we're ready to build a version of this assessment. First, I'll shuffle the assessment by clicking the Shuffle button. You can repeat this if you like until you've got a version that you're happy with. Then click Preview to see how the question set will render. I'm going to give the preview a quick scan to make sure everything looks good. Once I'm happy with the version, I'll close the Preview tab and click Build without shuffling again. I'm given a chance to make changes to the assessment title before continuing. I'll add a version label here, then click Build. Once it's built, I'm forwarded to the new version, where I can choose how I'll save it and make any changes I need to the response form, just as I would if I'd built the form myself. Users who have built response forms before will recognize this window. From here, you can use the print menu to print question books and response forms. Alternatively, you can also find your new assessment version by clicking in the Assessment tab. Selecting the assessment, we can print a copy of the question book by clicking Print and selecting Question Book. And here's our question book. We can print a matching response form by returning to the Assessment tab and clicking Print and selecting Generic Form or Print from Class List. The new Assessment Builder is a tool that we hope will save teachers time and which opens up some exciting possibilities. For more detailed information, see the Help section on Smartermarks or click on the links in the description.